Today, Turkey's election heats up with just days to go. Sudan's warring factions have signed an agreement allowing humanitarian aid to enter the country, Ukraine makes gains in Bakhmut, and a YouTuber admits crashing his plane for views. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Friday the 12th of May 2023. Turkey's presidential candidates and political parties are making one final push ahead of Sunday's election. There have been all sorts of ups and downs in the run-up to the election, and this final week was no different. So let's have a look at what happened. On Thursday, third-party presidential candidate Muharrem Inche withdrew from the race in a move that's expected to boost the chances of the main opposition candidate Kemal Kilic Durolu. Inche said that he's been a victim of character assassination, and his withdrawal comes days after an alleged sex tape, which is thought to be fake, surfaced online. Inche said, I offered a third option to Turkey. I tried to open a channel, but we could not succeed in this channel. No excuses left. Back in 2018, at the last election, Inche had been the presidential candidate for the main opposition CHP, but was defeated by President Erdogan. He's since split from the party and founded his own, called Homeland, but was polling in the low single digits ahead of Sunday's election. Inche had already been criticised by opponents of Erdogan for joining the presidential race and acting as a potential vote splitter. When announcing his withdrawal, he said he did not want to be blamed by the opposition alliance if they lost to Erdogan. While polling showed Inche only had limited support, his withdrawal could help Kilic Durolu over the 50% mark and avoid the need for a runoff vote. A poll released on Thursday carried out before Inche's withdrawal put Kilic Durolu on 49.3% compared to Erdogan's 43.7%. Kilic Durolu is from the Social Democrat CHP, but is supported by a six-party anti-Erdogan alliance comprising parties from across the political spectrum. President Erdogan said he was saddened by Inche's withdrawal and that the race will continue with the remaining candidates. Besides Erdogan and Kilic Durolu, there is also Sinan Ogan, a nationalist candidate polling in the low single digits. Also on Thursday, Kilic Durolu put out a pretty explosive tweet, accusing Russia of interfering with the election by spreading misinformation, deepfakes and conspiracies. He said, Dear Russian friends, if you want our friendship after May the 15th, get your hands off the Turkish state. We are still in favour of cooperation and friendship. On Sunday, voters will also be electing members to the 600-seat Grand National Assembly of Turkey. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Sudan's two warring factions, the Armed Forces and the Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, have signed an agreement aimed at allowing humanitarian assistance to resume in the country, US State Department officials have said. Now, it's important to note that this is not a ceasefire or a peace agreement, but rather, quote, a declaration of commitment to protect the civilians of Sudan. An official said the purpose is to guide the conduct of the two forces so that we can get in humanitarian assistance, help begin the restoration of essential services like electricity and water, to arrange for the withdrawal of security forces from hospitals and clinics, and so on. It was signed after nearly a week of pre-negotiation talks mediated by Saudi Arabia and the United States. These negotiations have been described as very tough, given the depth of enmity between the armed forces and RSF. Some six ceasefires have broken down in recent weeks due to violations from both sides. The violent power struggle between the Sudanese armed forces and paramilitary RSF has left more than 600 people dead, thousands injured and forced tens of thousands to flee their homes. So that's what's been happening in Sudan today. Let's move and discuss what's been happening in Ukraine. Ukraine has today claimed that they've recaptured territory around Bakhmut. This is the first evidence of a new Ukrainian pushback and in a territory that's been bitterly embattled for the last few months. For their part, the Russians have denied that such a pushback has occurred. This is despite Russian military bloggers writing on Telegram that they'd witnessed a Ukrainian advance in both the north and south of the city. It was only this week that Ukraine announced that they would not be pursuing their long-awaited counteroffensive in the near future. Bakhmut is very symbolically important to Russia in the war. A deputy Ukrainian defence minister described this importance as almost sacred to Putin's government. 
Clearly, the Ukrainians believe that Russia will not give back Mut up easily, and it's likely that intense fighting will continue there for the foreseeable future. In separate news from the war today, a large explosion was reported in the city of Melitopol this morning. This was according to the exiled Ukrainian mayor. It's not yet known what caused the blast. If you want more content like this from TLDR, then make sure you check out Nebula, where each week we release a roundup of what's been happening in Westminster in our series, This Week in Parliament. YouTuber Trevor Jacob has admitted this morning that he did indeed crash his plane for views. Back in December 2021, Jacob posted a video showing him jumping out of his plane and deploying a parachute, allowing his plane to crash into the Los Padres mountain beneath him. He implied that this was an accident. The video itself racked up about 2.9 million views. However, strangely, there are laws that prevent pilots from intentionally crashing their planes, irrespective of the ability for any subsequent video to garner views. In a plea deal, Jacob admitted that he filmed the video as part of a product sponsorship deal. Irrespective, he's looking at up to 20 years in prison. Jacob has already pled guilty to one felony count of destruction and concealment with the intent to obstruct a federal investigation. This was because he cleaned up the site of the plane crash before federal investigators could do their work. Mr. Jacob is expected to make his first court appearance in the next week. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss blood donation. The American Food and Drug Association, or FDA, have announced today that they've eased restrictions on blood donation by homosexual men in an effort to address blood shortages. This new policy recommends a series of questions that look at individual risk, irrespective of gender or sexual orientation. So, for example, men who have sex with men in a monogamous relationship will be allowed to donate blood. That's all we have time for on YouTube. Now, normally we would have an extended version of the daily briefing, but due to British rail strikes, I am the only one in the office today, so unfortunately there won't be. That's the streaming service we're building with a bunch of our creator friends, many of whom you're likely to be already watching. That means that by signing up, you not only get an extended ad-free daily briefing every single day, you also get to watch exclusive and ad-free videos from the best educational creators on YouTube. That's things like Real Life Law's incredible Modern Conflicts, which breaks down contemporary disputes around the world, Neo's Underexposure, which beautifully dives into complex and shadowy topics you've always wanted to know more about, or Extremities from Wendover Productions, which uncovers some of the world's most remote places. All of these are only available on Nebula, just like our extended daily briefings and a whole bunch of other exclusive TLDR content which never comes to YouTube. If you want to sign up, use the link in the description so that they know you came through us. That helps us out a whole lot, as does watching on Nebula more generally. So thanks for signing up and we'll see you on Nebula.